Joseph K. Are you Joseph K? Yes. You are the accused man. So I've been informed. Then you are the man I seek. I am the prison chaplain. Indeed. I had you summoned here to have a talk with you. Do you know that your case is going badly? I have that idea myself, yes. How do you think it will end? I do not know how it will end, do you? No, but I fear it will end badly. You are held to be guilty. Your case may never perhaps get beyond a lower court. But I am not guilty. It's a misunderstanding. And if it comes to that, how can any man be called guilty? We're all simply men here, one as much as the other. That is true. But that is how all guilty men talk. What is the next step you propose to take in the matter? I'm going to seek some more help. There are several possibilities I haven't investigated yet. You've cast about too much for outside help. Have you a little time for me? As much time as you need. You are the exception to those who belong to the court. I have more trust in you than any of the others. Though I know many of them. I feel I can speak openly to you. Don't be deluded. How am I being deluded? You are deluding yourself about the court. In the scriptures that preface the law, that particular delusion is described thus. Before the law stands a doorkeeper on guard. To this doorkeeper comes a man from the country who begs admittance to the law. But the doorkeeper says that he cannot admit the man at the moment. The man, on reflection, asks if we will allow then to enter later. It is possible, answers the doorkeeper, but not at this moment. The doorkeeper gives him a stool and lets him sit down at the side of the door. There he sits waiting for days and years. In the first years, he curses his evil fate aloud. Later, as he grows older, he only mutters to himself. He grows old. Now his life is drawing to a close. Before he dies, all that his experience during the whole time of his sojourn condenses in his mind into one question which he has never yet put to the doorkeeper. He beckons the doorkeeper, since he can no longer raise his stiffening body. What is it you want to know now? asks the doorkeeper. Everyone strives to attain the law, says the man. How is it then that in all these years, no one has come seeking admission but me? The doorkeeper sees the man as at the end of his strength and his Hearing is failing, so he bellows in his ear. No one but you could gain admittance through this door, since this door was intended for no one but you. I am now going to shut it. That is the story in the very words of the scriptures. The court makes no claims on you. It receives you when you come, and it relinquishes you when you go. Herr Kapitlitzkevia. 
En natt mellan tio på kvällen och sex på morgonen. Efteråt var mina ben så stela att jag knappt kunde resa mig från skrivbordet. Flera gånger under natten kände jag att jag bar hela min tyngd på ryggen. Hur allt kan uttryckas. Och som för det mest säregna infall finns en stor eld där de förtärs och återuppstår. Hur det blånade utanför fönstret. Kvällen före Kås 31 födelsedag vid tiden, då det som tystast på gatorna kom två herrar in i hans bostad. Kom in. Så du är appointed för mig? Klena gamla skådespelare, de skickar och hämtar mig. Jag är redo. Let us go. såg nu klart att det var meningen att han själv skulle gripa kniven och stöta den i sitt bröst. Men han gjorde det inte. Istället vred han på huvudet och såg sig omkring. Hans blick föll på översta våningen i ett hus i närheten av stenbrottet. Vem var det? En vän? Någon som ville hjälpa? Var fanns den höga domstol som han aldrig nått fram till? Han lyfte händerna och spärrade ut fingrarna. Men den ena av herrarna hade redan gripit K om strupen. Med slocknande ögon kunde han fortfarande se de betraktade återkalleliga slutet. Som en hund, sa han. Det var som om skammen skulle överleva honom. The last word is shame, but it is not that shame which has outlived Franz Kafka. On the contrary, it has been the, the dark radiance of his work. And I'd like to go further than that, the almost impenetrable purity of the man's presence. He has made it just that little bit harder for every one of us to write, even to speak after him. Och de texter som Kafkas nära vän Max Brod lovat att förstöra efter författarens död ingår nu i den civiliserade världens kulturarv. De bandlystes och brändes på bål av nazisterna 1933 och Kafkas systrar och hans älskade Milena dog i Auschwitz. Men hans böcker lever fortfarande över hela världen. Ja, i Prag kan man förstås inte få tag i dem. Där är Kafka fortfarande en besvärande gengångare. Och det skulle inte ha förvånat honom det minsta. Tvärtom stämmer det väl överens med själva kärnan i hans budskap. Hans syn på människan som en hemlös varelse i en rättslös värld. In a very brief moment of self-confidence, God knows he didn't have many, Kafka said that once, I think it was on a hotel ledger or in his diary, 
He took his pen and wrote the letter K, K. And he said, perhaps this letter will belong to me. In fact, it does. For almost all of us today, K is Kafka. As for example, S is not Shakespeare. And I can think of no other figure in the history of literature or of thought who has made his own a letter of the alphabet.